Over the years, Linux has had some pretty crazy vulnerabilities. Some of them have been fairly crazy, but not really that exploitable in the real world. This one is a little bit different. And the name shows just how ridiculous this is. This is the Dirty Pipe vulnerability, which is fairly similar to an earlier vulnerability from 2016 titled Dirty Cow, basically making that exploit considerably more viable. And I have no idea who keeps coming up with these amazing names, but every vulnerability seems to have one. If you want the nitty gritty technical details, this exploit is listed under CVE 2022-0847, and I'll leave that in the description down below. This exploit effectively allows for the complete destruction of your system. You might think I'm exaggerating, I am not. So this is a fairly recent exploit affecting kernels after 5.8 all because of some refactoring and some fairly innocuous elements of the kernel. Pipes, pages, the splice system call, and a flag titled pipe buff flag can merge. So pipes basically allow for the unidirectional transfer of data between files and processors. You've without a doubt used them in your shell before. Pages are basically four kilobyte blocks of data. This is just the way the kernel breaks down your data so it's not working on all of the data at once. The splice system call allows you to pass around references to these pages rather than having to copy them every single time. This allows for a more optimized use of these pages. This might not seem like a big deal, it's only 4 kilobytes, but when we're talking about something at the level of the kernel and the amount of data it needs to work on, that is a massive optimization. And the flag indicates if you're allowed to merge more data into the pipe buffer. Normally, if you're just copying data into the pipe buffer, if the page isn't full, you're allowed to copy more. Now, the way this exploit works is actually really dangerously simple. So you'll start off by creating a pipe. You will then copy arbitrary data into that pipe to make sure the pipe buff flag can merge flag has been set in all instances. Then you will drain the pipe, leaving that flag set in all of the pipe buffers. This is where the bug occurs because that flag should be getting reset. You'll then splice data from a target read-only file into the pipe from just before where your target is. Normally when you splice data into a pipe, you are not able to write more data to that page because now you have a reference to that data and if you were to go and add more data to it, this will start overwriting the file. But if we remember from before, this pipe buffer still has the can merge flag set. So now we have a can mergeable pipe buffer that also has a reference to data in it. This is a really big problem because what we can do here is write arbitrary data to that pipe buffer and then overwrite what is being referenced to. And you might be thinking, well, what about write permissions? Well, write permissions are working perfectly fine. The problem is the write permissions aren't checked in pipes because it's assumed that when you're at the pipe level, permissions have already been accepted. All of that sounds cool, but what can you do with this? Well, the example in the write-up basically injects arbitrary SSH keys to allow you to remote into a system, which is a pretty big deal. But that's not all you can do. You could just delete the root password and then just get on the root account perfectly fine. Or how about this? You modify the set UID binary to drop you into a root shell and then you modify it back to make it look like nothing happened. All of that is scary enough, but this is what makes it worse. So this is the quote from the write-up. To make this vulnerability more interesting, it not only works with write permissions, it also works with immutable files on read-only ButterFS snapshots and on read-only mounts, including CD-ROMs. This is because the page cache is always writable by the kernel and writing to a pipe never checks permissions. And that is just the exploit itself and not what the exploit allows you to do. Because once you have a root shell on someone's system, from the perspective of the computer, from the perspective of Linux, you're the owner of the system, so you can do whatever you want. You can deploy ransomware or anything else. But unlike many exploits, you don't need access to the system. All you need to do is convince the person to download and run a program, which might seem difficult if you're the sort of person who actually checks the software they are running on their system. 
but there is a lot of people out there who will just blindly download programs from GitHub, and if something is masquerading as a program they want, well, getting them to run it is pretty easy. Especially when a common way to install programs is just curling a link into Bash. And if you want a reason you should never go and do that, this exploit is exactly why. While this exploit is certainly scary, it's not all powerful. Firstly, you must have read permissions on the file you want to attack. But because you can drop yourself into a root shell, evading that limitation is pretty straightforward. Also, the target offset you set must not be on the boundary of a page. Also, you cannot write more than a page boundary, so you cannot write more than 4 kilobytes, and the file cannot be resized. But it gets a little bit worse. So desktops and servers are one thing, they're fairly easy to update. As of 5.16.11, 5.15.25, and 5.10.102, this has been patched. And many of the popular distros, things like Debian and Ubuntu, have backported the patch as well, so make sure your system is just up to date. The problem though is this bug has been reproduced on a Pixel 6, an Android system. What this likely means is it's reproducible on any Android kernel after 5.8. And as we know, cell manufacturers are not great at pushing updates, especially for slightly older devices. But hopefully, whatever device you're using doesn't have the exploit or is getting security updates and an update is pushed to protect it. If for whatever reason your device cannot be updated for the foreseeable future until it can be, please be extra careful in the software you download and run. Make sure you check what you're running or only download it from trusted sources. So that's going to be it for me, and let me know your thoughts on this whole situation in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea, a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.